Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats, um, turkeys and chickens, other things I can name. Welcome on back, Dutch by Kai, I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender once again. You guessed it, we're doing another material, cause it's been a while, my friends. It's been a little bit of time since we've done a material, which is, uh, not my favorite, cause we love, I love materials, you guys love, uh, seeing them. I hope anyway. I got a simple, simple one for you today. A double simple one, and it's a stone material. Real quick, let's do a little turnaround here. You see, it's a, it's just very simple, very easy. A lot of you guys ask me about materials you can build off of, which this is totally one of those type of ordealies. Um, and I really like the way it looks. So, I also have a very simple displacement modifier on here, but we'll talk about all this in a second. So, what I did was, to start off, I just have a couple of lights in my scene here. I have a couple of lights in my scene here, so I have... Um, one, uh, lamp over here that I turned to area, and then I turned on a square, it was on rectangle to start with, I turned on square and then just bumped the size up, and I just duplicated that with shift D on my keyboard, hit shift D, and I just double tapped R and rotated it and moved it by hitting G, and moved it down here, then I have another point lamp here with a high power of like 200 or so, uh, and that's just our main light right there, so there we go. Um, all that out the way, this is actually an icosphere, so if I take off the subdivision surface and the displacement, you can see this is what it looked like to start with. Actually, it was on uh, shade flat, so it looks like that, which is not very good. So I turned on object, shade flat, and then I went, oh, shade smooth, sorry, shade smooth, and then I went uh, add modifier, subdivision surface, and bumped that up to three on the render and the viewport. We can downsize that now. And then I went ahead and I added in a displacement modifier here. And I added a texture. And then this texture in the texture tab, I changed it to clouds. I hit new and changed it to clouds, um, which looks good. And then I just bumped the strength down to 0.1. Just to get a little bit of deformity in there, you know. Uh, something like that. Now, for the material itself, something super simple. I'll start off just with the default, um, with the default material here, which I did... Uh, this so this is what I did let me actually take off the displacement for a second uh, and actually the subsurface as well we can take that off too so I did like this for the default uh, material which is just a very very small amount of uh, noise texture so what I did was I took the regular principal BSDF which was plugged up into the material output let me just move all these down out of the way for a second uh, so we don't need those so you know the default material is just a principled into the material I changed the base color to about this type of darkish color, and then I added a little tiny bit of blue into it, just by pushing that up a little bit. Um, and then I went ahead and I added in a Shift A, Search, Noise Texture, just grab that bad boy. Uh, and then I changed the scale to 8.7, the detail to 11.7, and the distortion on zero. And then I was like, well, that's not enough. That's not enough for me. So what did I do? I added in another, another noise texture by hitting Shift D and duplicating it and drag the color into the roughness, and then we got something like this, and we got something like, we, let me try this again, alright, so then I, I plugged it into the roughness, and then we we got something like this, there we go, um, <laughs> and I changed the scale to 14.7, and the detail all the way up to 16, so uh, you see that's, I gave it a little bit more roughness in there, which looks pretty swell, um, I didn't think that was enough, so of course I didn't stop there, I dragged open the uh, material output over here, and I hit Shift A, and I search for a mix shader, and then I grab that mix shader, and I plug that in between the BS, the principal BSDF and the material output. Uh, and then on the bottom shader, I just hit Shift D and duplicated this uh, principal BSDF shader here, like that. And then I just put it down here, and plugged it up into the bottom of the mix shader. So now we got something like like. Uh, uh. So now we got something like, let me, one more time now, one, third time's a chime, you know. So I plugged it in and it looked something like this. Yep, mm -hmm, there we go, right on cue. And we go ahead and I hit Shift A and search, and search for a Voronoi, which is just V-O-R. And I grabbed that bad boy, plopped it right here, and plugged this into the specular, I do believe. And turned the scale to 8.4. Um, and, and made sure this was on intensity and not cells and distance and closest. So there we go. And of course, it looks something like... Uh, boom. Oh my goodness gracious, that worked! I cannot believe it! Wow, okay, well that... Oh, well, sweet. Alright, well, I didn't think that was... Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> so now we have that little bit of Voronoi in there. You see that little tiny bit. Just very subtly. I think I'm actually going to turn that down a little bit. So maybe 4 instead of 0.8. Yeah, we'll do 4. 4 looks cool. 
So four, much more subtle. I like it a little better. Um, and then just because uh, uh, I, I went ahead and I, I unhid the uh, subdivision and the displacement. So now that is our final material there. I'll turn my overlays back off. That's our final stony material, kind of gray, kind of nice looking, you know. Uh, and the cool thing about this is it's very easy to change the color. Of course, you just go in here to the base color of the first principal BSDF, and then, and then just, and then just, come on now, Blender, what's going on, man? What's going on, man? You having some issues? We need to work through this together, or is it just something that you need to do by yourself? Because the, there we go. Okay. So I just, you can just go in here and change the color, which is pretty cool. So now you have like a lump of clay. Like, you know, the, what's the name of that, uh, that blue stuff that used to be on like the, the back of posters, you know, they would have like the glue stuff. What is that stuff called? Whatever that is. It looks like that's what, looks, that's what that looks like. And then we have green, you know, maybe a yellower color, a reddish color, a really deep red with a little bit of pink in there, just like solid pink, purple, all this nice stuff. So you can go ahead and just change the color super easily, which is really, really nice. I think I'm going to actually go with a color, so I think I want to do a uh, pinkish red like that because that always catches attention on the front of thumbnails. Um, <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. I hope you boys and girls enjoyed it. Uh, really super simple, easy material. I just like making these. I like the making the, you know, the more rougher, like lumpier, you know, detailed, uh, but still simple. Uh, noise texture material. So I hope you boys and girls enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.